from the quilt addicts anonymous.com i'm stephanie sebbing and today we are working on the march block of the month if you are loving the fabric that i'm using here there are kits available just go to quilt addicts anonymous.com and check out the block of the month section you can find all the printable instructions including the ones for this month as well as a link to the kit and you can get backing fabric that matches as well well, let's get started. We are not paper piecing this month, so you should be very excited about that. We are going to be doing some cool things with triangles, though, that are made from squares. So the method we're going to be using, we sew first um, along the bias, and then we cut it apart, and it's very accurate. So if you've ever had troubles with your points not ending up where they're supposed to be, you're going to really get some great tips today. So I'm going to start with the easiest block. We have some corners where there's just gonna be a little corner triangle on this little piece here that goes in the corner of our block. And it's pretty simple to do. What you wanna do here is go ahead and draw a line from point to point on the wrong side of your fabric. And if you're using batiks, it really isn't a wrong side, but if you're using something out of your stash that isn't batik, then you're gonna wanna make sure you do that on the wrong side. And we're gonna sew right on top of this line. The rest of the ones, we're not going to do that. We're gonna sew to the side of it, but this one we're gonna sew right on top of that line. And then I can just go ahead and trim along this corner off. I just wanna to get to about a quarter inch seam allowance. Now I just need to press this open and then this part of the block is going to be done. All right, so now we're gonna go ahead and move on to our flying geese units. And this is gonna look a little bit different than you're used to doing flying geese if you normally cut the rectangle and then you sew, trim your seam and flip over like we just did with the, the corner on the last one. But what we're gonna do is we're gonna make no waste flying geese units. And sometimes these are also called four at a time flying geese units. It's very accurate, it's very fast, which is good when you're making flying geese because let's face it, nobody really loves making flying geese, but they are pretty. So that's why we're using them in this pattern. So what we're gonna have is we're gonna have one big square and we're gonna have four little squares. And you wanna make sure you pay close attention to the cutting instructions and which fabrics go where because that's very important. Um, there's layout diagrams for you there. So we start a lot like we did with the last one where I'm just going to draw a line from point to point on all four of these flying geese units. And it's if you're using a fabric that has a right and wrong side, you're gonna to wanna to do that on the wrong side. So now I'm gonna lay these so that the first little square is in one corner and the second little square is in the opposite corner. Now you can pin this in place if you want or you can kind of just get these in place as you're sewing through. It really is completely up to you and your preference and how much you like to pin or not pin. I don't really like to pin so I'm not going to pin mine but you certainly could get these all laid out and pin your corners or your little squares in place and then bring it all to the sewing machine if you're just getting started. Now I'm gonna do something special. I'm gonna set my sewing machine to sew a scant quarter inch stitch. On my machine, that means I set it up for a quarter inch stitch and then I hit a button to move my needle position one to the right. Um, it'll be your left if you're watching me on video. And that just helps get a little bit more accuracy because this math is really right on. A lot of times when I teach making squares from, or triangles from squares, I add a little bit extra in so that way you're good if you trim down or make a mistake. This one doesn't work that way. You have to be right on. So, and don't worry if that scares you. You know, you can always fudge things in when you're quilting. We're certainly not the quilt glaze here. So if you have a few that are a little wonky, even if you've got the kit, I have it in there to where you can make a few mistakes and not run out of fabric. So what I've done now is I'm lining up my pressure foot with the edge of this line that I drew on my little square. And I'm just gonna go ahead and sew down. And I kind of slow down a little bit when I get to the center. I want those lines to line up from one little square to the next. And making sure that everything is still aligned along the other side. And then when I get finished and I get down to that side, now I'm gonna flip this around. And now I'm lining up my pressing foot again with that drawn line, just I'm gonna sew a scant quarter inch seam down the other side of that drawn line. 
Now here's where it gets a little crazy, especially if you've never done this before. We're gonna go ahead and line our ruler up right on that drawn line, and we're just gonna go ahead and cut right on it. So now I'm gonna go ahead and grab my iron, and I'm gonna press these open, and it's gonna kinda look like a heart. And I know that that looks like this, there's no way this is gonna be a flying geese unit when you're done, but I promise it works out. So just keep following along and you will never want to do flying geese any other way again. All right, so now comes the fun part. I have my little unit that looks like a heart. And so I'm going to lay that down and I'm going to take one of my leftover squares here and I'm going to line that up so that the corner is right even with the corner of what is now a large half square triangle with this dark blue and then the other point where the line is is going to be right in between where these two triangles are or the center of the heart. So now we're going to do the same thing. We're going to sew a scant quarter inch seam down either side of this drawn line. And when you're doing a bunch of these, you can chain piece these. All right, so I've got this together and we're all sewn up. And now the magic is going to happen. You're going to see how this becomes a flying geese unit. All right, so we're going to do this just like the other one. I'm going to lay my ruler down on that line that we drew. And then I'm going to cut right across it. And now as you see, when you open this up, you have a nice flying geese unit. So we're gonna go ahead and exchange this for the pressing surface and press that open. And then I'm gonna show you how to square these up so that you have nice, perfect flying geese units every time. All right, so what we wanna do is trim this up to two and a half inches by four and a half inches for a rectangle. And you shouldn't be trimming much off because the math is pretty right on for this, but it helps to get it nice and square because then it helps the rest of your piecing. So I'm looking for a few things here. I'm making sure that the point of where my two triangles come together is right at the edge of the ruler. And on the other side that that same point is at the four and a half by two and a half inch mark. I'm also kind of making sure that my point where my fabrics come together where the three triangles meet at the top is right at the quarter inch line because that ensures that as long as we sew a quarter inch seam next that we're gonna have accurate piecing. So I do have just a little bit hanging off here. So I'm just going to go ahead and cut across the right and the top. I'm going to move that out of the way. And now I flip this over. So now I have a cut edge to line up against. So I'm lining up my left and my bottom right along the four and a half and the two and a half inch mark because that's what we're sizing up to. And if you notice my 45 degree line of my ruler is right on where those triangles meet and that means that we're pretty dead on and we're gonna have some pretty accurate fine geese. So now I can go ahead and cut and trim here and now I have a nice perfect rectangle which will make the next part really easy because it'll just be piecing, like piecing two rectangles together. So I hope that you're having fun with this construction method and that you want to do all your flying geese like this in the future. I know I never do them any other way. And we're gonna do something similar now to make the hourglass unit that's at the center of our block. So again, just like all the other triangles we've done so far, I'm going to draw a line from corner to corner on the wrong side of my fabric. And then I'm gonna lay that right sides together with my next piece of fabric that goes with it. And again, make sure you refer to your free printable roll instructions on quiltagsanonymous.com so that you have all the measurements of these blocks as well as which fabrics are supposed to go where. So I've still got my sewing machine set up for a scant quarter inch seam. So I'm gonna go ahead and sew down both sides of this square along the line that we drew. All right, I bet you can guess what's coming next. We're gonna get out our cutting board and we're going to go ahead and lay our ruler along that line that we drew. And we're gonna go ahead and cut that open. And then we're gonna press it open as well. I know that we've been pressing a lot of seams open for this quilt, but for this one, it's beneficial to press it so that the seams are underneath one side of this block. And that's gonna help us with the next step when we put these together all right, time to draw some more lines. We're gonna draw from corner to corner on the wrong side of this half square triangle unit that we just made. And we're not gonna trim anything up yet. We're gonna wait till the very end. Now I'm laying these right sides together so that 
it's facing the opposite fabric. And there is a trick to making sure that this comes together. So we press our seams to opposite sides. So these seams should butt right up next to each other. And that's really helpful. You shouldn't feel a gap or a bump here. It just should be one flat seam. But to make sure that it's flat, what you can do is you can kind of preview it by opening up the fabric. And if you're meeting right in there, then you know you're right on the line. And where it's important to be together is right where this line is. It doesn't really matter if you're on here or here. Here's where you're gonna be able to see it. So if you feel better about it, you can put a little pin in right in that seam line, and then that will help you keep everything good and straight as you are going through and sewing. Now we're gonna go ahead and sew a scant quarter inch seam down either side of the line that we drew. Just like we've been doing all along, so this should be easy peasy by now. Now when I get to the seam allowance and my needle is down, only then do I remove my pin because my needle now acts as a pin and keeps that nice and tight where those joints are gonna to come together so that you have a nice little perfect center in your hourglass unit. Let's go ahead and sew it on both sides. We are gonna go ahead and cut down that line that we drew. This is always the exciting part when you get to see how your join came together. In this case, it did pretty good. Um, if it's not right on, what you can do is you can just pick the seam out about, you know, half an inch or so on either side, readjust, pin, and do it again. You don't have to redo this entire block if you're off just a hair. So now we're gonna wanna square this up to four and a half inches. And again, you shouldn't really have a whole lot to trim off, but you definitely wanna clean it up and get rid of some of these dog ears. So I'm kinda of making sure that I have my four and a half inch either just inside or right on where all these points are. And same with the outside of the ruler. And once I'm confident of that, then I go ahead and cut. And then we're gonna flip that over, and just like with the flying geese unit, we're now gonna line our cut edge up with the edge, of, or with the four and a half inch mark here. And my 45 degree line is right on the seam, which means I'm doing really good, and those points are gonna end up right where you're supposed to. A lot of accuracy when it comes to triangles is making sure that those points are truly coming to the point of your block. And as long as you do that and make sure when you're doing the trimming section that that is the case, then you're gonna have a lot of success when you go to put the rest of the block together. So we need to sew these flying geese together. And if you've done a really good job of sewing accurately and trimming accurately, it should just be like putting two rectangles together. So I don't actually pin these at all. Um, you're welcome to if you, if you want to, but I don't like to pin when I don't have to, and in this case, I don't have to. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna flip these right sides together, and these really match up good. They really came out well. And then there's one thing that I'm gonna show you guys. It's a nice little tip. I have it so that the point of the large flying geese is pointing towards my sewing machine and it's and it's up so I can see it. And the reason is because I wanna see where these stitching lines come together and it might be kinda of hard to see on camera but you're gonna see a, a little X where your stitching lines come together and go over into that seam allowance. And you want your needle to be just one needle width to the right of where that X is so that you're within the seam allowance. And if you do that consistently, then you're gonna have points that end up exactly where they're supposed to be every single time. So I'm gonna go ahead and put my sewing machine now to a standard quarter inch stitch. We don't need the scant quarter inch stitch anymore. So I'm just gonna go ahead and start sewing here. And I'm gonna slow down when I get toward that point because I wanna be able to see clearly where I'm going. And then I can go ahead and speed up. And now we always have the moment of truth when we open up our unit and we find in this case that my point is exactly where it's supposed to be. So that's always really exciting when that happens. So make sure you follow that tip and your points too will end up right where they're supposed to be. Now, I always press this so that the seam is underneath the large triangle. It's sort of the path of least resistance and it helps keep that point nice and tidy as well uh, if you press it in that direction. So 
From here on out, all you have to do is refer to your layout diagram in the free printable instructions on quiltaddictsanonymous.com that go with the March block of the month. And you will be able to see which units go where. And then just with some careful pinning, you're going to be able to get your block together. It's just like sewing a nine pass together from here on out. All right, through the magic of editing, I have finished my March block of the month, and I'm really loving how these colors are coming together. They really pop against that dark blue. And if you're loving the fabrics as much as I am, there are kits available, so you can make one that looks exactly like this one. And they use artisan hand-dyed batiks. They're really gorgeous, and usually they sell for a lot more than what I'm charging you guys. But I don't have a brick-and-mortar store, so I don't have that same overhead. And so definitely check that out. Get the free pattern at quiltaddictsanonymous.com and happy quilting.